Is it true that in this day and age, women are not allowed to hold higher positions in the church? To me, this seems a little sexist and rudimentary. I would like to know where this fits in with this church and how it came to be. Uh, I just read an incredible book about why Christianity went from like a hundred people when Jesus went back into heaven to become the dominant religion of the Roman Empire in just a few centuries. There was a sociologist who wrote a book trying to figure out, like, why, why was Christianity so popular so fast? Was it the, the message of God's love compared to the other gods of the Greeks and Romans? And he explored all these angles. And do you know what one of his top answers was, one of his theories? That Jesus Christ and his followers loved women a hundred times more than the culture around them. In Greek and Roman culture, a woman could not cheat on her husband. But a man was expected to cheat on his wife. There's some uh, early Roman writers who said, these Christians say it's wrong for a man to visit a prostitute. They are so strict. (laughs) Because the Bible says, no, husbands, be faithful to your wives. Be like Jesus to your wives. Like If you care about your own body, then care about your wife. Don't. Don't run around on her. Don't be unfaithful to her. Love her with the supreme example that Jesus set for you. The the Bible says in Galatians 3, verse 28, in Jesus, there's not like a men and women distinction. We are all one through faith in him. In fact, if you look at Jesus, you know, all, all the men are there, the Pharisees with the stones, the stone, that adulterous woman. You remember the story? And Jesus stands up for her, a woman, And when he's going to Jerusalem, he enjoys the hospitality of his friends Mary and Martha. He knows them by name and he loves them dearly. And Mary Magdalene, some of you know, is one of the closest followers of Jesus in the whole Bible. Like when when the early uh, people in the first and second century read these stories in the Bible, they said, this faith loves women so much. Like Jewish people dismissed the testimony of women The Bible written by Jewish men has Mary being the first witness of the resurrected Jesus. Like They read things like 1 Corinthians chapter 7, a a man's body does not belong to himself, it also belongs to his wife. And people said, what? (laughs) They read things like uh, Ephesians chapter 5, husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. And they said, are you serious? Right, so in those days, The Christian love for women was so, it it might have been one of the leading factors of the explosion numerically of the Christian church. But that's not what this question asked, is it? (laughs) In this day and age, is there any distinction? Um, I actually preached a four-week sermon, (laughs) are you sensing a theme here? A four-week sermon series called God and Gender a couple years ago. You should track down my complete answer to that question. Um, Let me summarize it this way. There are some people who say that in the Bible, there is no distinction in any way between men and women. Man can be a pastor, a woman can be a pastor. Men can be leading the church, women can be leading the church. It doesn't matter. That's called egalitarianism, if you want a big word. There's another group of people that says, no, the Bible actually does make a distinction. There's a high love for men and women, but there are passages that seem to say, you know, some things yes and some things no. That position is called complementarianism. Men and women complement each other. There's there's a difference, but they're complementary. So egalitarianism, complementarianism, which one is right? If you ask me, this one. Write down these references if you want. Um, 1 Timothy chapter 2, I think it's verse 11. The Apostle Paul says, I do not permit, let me find it word for word. Verse 12, I do not permit a woman to teach or to assume authority over a man. To me, that seems like a distinction. Um, Ephesians chapter 5, talking about family. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as you do to the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church, his body. That sounds like a a distinction to me. Um, You should read 1 Corinthians chapter 11, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, 1 um, Peter chapter 3, 
the qualifications for a pastor in Titus chapter 1 or 1 Timothy chapter 3. In all these passages, I see a distinction that the Bible's making between the two. Not a, we're better and you're lesser, but a complementary in position that I think goes through a lot of the New Testament writings. Last example, before this bums you out. I know this is hard in uh, 2020s America. Um, think of Jesus. Actually, just let me speak to the women in the house right now. Imagine if you're with Jesus. And Jesus has chosen his 12 apostles and you quickly notice something about them. Matthew, Thomas, John, James, the first of two, Philip, Peter, Andrew, and Bartholomew, the other James, Zealous Simon, Judas, Thaddeus. They're all dudes. And they're not all dudes who are smarter than me. <laughs> right? Peter opens his mouth and he says something dumb. Like, why? Well, is Jesus sexist? And then you follow Jesus and you find out he is not. No one has loved you like Jesus. No one pays attention to your words like Jesus. No one cares as much about your opinion as Jesus. You're, you're not a doormat. You're not second rate. He, he says, look at this woman. I have not seen faith like this in all of Israel. He says, let those of you who are without sin cast the first stone at this woman. He, he could have appeared to James or John the, night, the day he rose from the dead. Instead, he appears to Mary and makes her the first witness of the greatest day in human history. F follow Jesus and you find a distinction, but you do not feel less than or unloved. And this is what we're trying to do today. It ain't easy. I'll tell you what's easy. Uh, it's easy for men to be jerks and for women to be critics. That's easy. I'm the man. I'm the pastor. J just listen to me. Ladies, keep your questions aside. No, to actually listen to women, engage with women, understand where women are coming from. That's the hard work of leadership. And it's pretty easy if you're, if you're not one of the leaders to be, to be critical, to throw out these passages on respect your husband and submission to church authorities. Like, this is not an easy teaching. But God knows it's biblical and it's beautiful. So, women are not allowed to hold higher positions in the church. In a way, I think that's true. Is it sexist and rudimentary? Only if Jesus is sexist? I would like to know where this fits in with the church and how it came to be. It came from the Old and New Testament, 1 Corinthians 11. 14, Ephesians 5, 1 Peter 3, Genesis 2, the creation of Adam and Eve, and many other passages. Do you struggle to find time to connect with God? Well, click here to subscribe to our daily email where we'll make sure that you hear about God's promises, his love, and his amazing word.